Hello, welcome to the Scale Model Club, and on this week's show, Airfix's new Spitfire Mark 5C painted and added to the diorama. Hello everyone, and on this week's show, painting what we built last week. Uh, first job is to undercoat. Um, I've marked up the canopy, I'm afraid to say I didn't film that. Um, I've done some masking stuff in the past, I'll do a masking video, we'll do some tips videos soon about all the little extra bits that I do with the modelling. Um, yeah, so this is Vallejo's uh, grey ghost grey primer. Um, I really like this primer. In fact, I'm going to try and get myself the uh, the black primer to give that a go. So I speed this up. Grey primer all over. Uh, thanks everybody for uh, watching our videos. Thanks for liking and subscribing. And thanks everybody for following along. So I built the propeller, let's give that around the coat as well. Uh, I did some pre-shading, but I'm, I'm, I had some trouble with the airbrush, as you can see. Uh, it's a bit on the thick side. Uh, pressure was too high, and um, I think I've got a problem with the needle. So I finished this off and thought what I'll do is I'll just um, put some extra paint, be a bit more careful with the... Uh, with the top coat. Uh, so when I put the top coat on and um, I will make sure that I paint up to the line. See, the, the, that's not bad, that's not too bad. Still a bit of a mess, but... So in this uh, episode, I'm going to be using um, Vallejo's Desert RAF colours. Um, they make all these different color schemes um, there's a lot of paints that come in the set um, you get sort of a brown dark brown the azure blue for the bottom a couple of greys and you get this lovely pull out postery thing with lots and lots of different color schemes on there and the paints that you need to use for said color schemes uh, we all know the quality of Vallejo paints, so the paints are quite good. But it's nice to have a set that you can use. Um, so I painted the bottom. I, unfortunately, I lost that footage. Sorry about that, people. Um, but it was just a blanket paint. Um, and that was the Azure Blue, which seems to be the bottom of all the desert vehicles. It was a, it's a lovely tone. Those of you that follow me on Instagram, I, uh, I did put some pictures of the... Of after I painted the blue and it's a lovely tone look at that <clears throat> I just went a little bit heavy um, in between the panelling lines so I sort of tidied them up with the top coat and uh, now I'm going to mask it all up so I used Tamiya's masking tape um, I think that's the 6mm um, I do that for everything that I need a nice edge for. So I'll go along the, the bottom so you get a nice edge along the side and I'll go across the front because you need a nice edge across the front. And then for covering the main wings, I'll just take a big piece of uh, masking tape and stick it on the bottom. Um, that does two things. One, it obviously stops the paint from going on the bottom. And secondly, it gives you a, a feathered edge. So if you paint that from the top, you'll, the paint will go down the side of the wing. And then if you paint the bottom one from the bottom, it will go around the sides. And it just leaves you a nice feathered edge right on the edge of the wing, which I think is quite a nice effect. And so this is the middle sand colour. 
I'm going to paint the whole of the top in middle sand. I always paint from the lighter shades to the darker shades. Um, if you're going to have to paint a really light shade, like a white or a yellow, that don't have much pigments in them, you will sometimes, or more than likely, have to paint um, a, a lighter coat on first, like a grey. And so once the top coat comes on, you can see that the, um, the panel lines start to disappear. They work themselves in. I was quite pleased with it, really pleased with the finish, to be fair. And then after I've covered this in the middle stone colour, I then freehanded the camouflage on, and the camouflage was painted in a dark earth. And that would complete the camouflage pattern and the main colours of the aircraft. It's been a brilliant kit, um, a few little minor problems, but nothing major. Um, I think it's a massive step forward for uh, Airfix with the cockpit, with all the cockpit detail that you get. Now, I will be buying another one um, so that I can do it with the wheels down and the cockpit open because it's because uh, that's what I like. So, yeah, so that's the, uh, the dark earth painted on. That was freehand, no masking. Uh, now I'm going to cover the whole thing in a clear varnish. That's, that's uh, Tamiya's X22 clear varnish. And it puts it's, puts a little shine on it. It's not like a, a gloss, but it puts a shine on it. Just enough for you to get the weathering powders and paints and decals on. So we'll put this decal on. That's warm water I've got in there, sort of tepid. Uh, the warmer the water, the quicker it will slide off, but I always find that sort of just warm out of the taps, okay. And as you can see, I've protected the paint with the clear that we just painted on. That's me fiddling about with the, the little red squares that cover the gun ports. Um, you sort of have to stick one side of those on, let it dry, and then use the mark fit or your decal solution the setting one to soften them and eventually they'll just curl around the corner they're an awkward really awkward little decal to fit and i've, I've never liked doing them but it's i yeah, it seems easier to do that than it does to mask them all up on 170 on 148 i'll, I'll mask them up and paint them red but but as soon as they're actually supposed to be a sticker over a gun hole then they don't look too bad as a decal. But yeah, if you just tease them around the corner, that's when your patience has to take hold and you don't just launch it all into the bin. So I've got these reverse tweezers. Obviously you push them to open them and you let go and it keeps hold of the of the decal. Paint your decal solution on the wing first and then slide the decal off the paper onto the uh, onto the plane. And now you should, if you put a little bit of decal solution on the top and that will help it sit right down. It will soften and it will sit right down into all the grooves. So now once the propeller's fitted and the all the decals are fitted, I'm going to cover the whole thing in another clear varnish just to seal the, uh, the decals in. I don't go all over the aircraft, I literally just paint where the decals have been. I do love teeth on the front of an aircraft. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is a panel wine wash. Um, it's not going to be a pin wash because I can never seem to get this pin wash thing to work. I know all the other modellers do it, but it's been dried. Um, 
I don't know whether it's because the it just doesn't take very well. I don't know. Anyway, this is a dark brown wash from is it AK or is it? Oh my god, is it Mig Ammo? I can't remember. I think it's Mig Ammo. Yes, it's Mig Ammo, and it's um, it's a dark earth color. Um, and this is an enamel wash. So you're going to need to clean your brushes with enamel, uh, with a white spirit. I use enamel washes because it was a acrylic uh, a varnish. So you just basically paint all over the lines, all over your panel lines. And then once that's dried, let that dry for a, a good half hour, 20 minutes. Um, and then you can wipe it off with your cotton bud and make sure you wipe your, it off in the direction of flow of the wind of, of over the wings of the aircraft otherwise if you go side to side it will it'll look really strange so you just pick out all the panel lines let the wash run into it to be honest, the wash actually might be a little on the thick side. It might it could probably do with watering down a little bit more, but I'll have to play with it. So wet cotton bud, uh, just just really sort of not even damp, but just and then you just wipe down the sides, and you'll get rid of all the excess. You'll leave the dark brown paint in the panel lines and you'll also um, shade the paints you've already put on. So there'll be everything will be slightly darker because it looks a little bit grubby and there's a lot of air dirt on it. But it does give a really nice effect. I did this. Uh, I do this on most of my aircraft and I think it makes a lot of difference. Next thing I really need to get into is some chipping. I did try it on this aircraft, um, but it didn't come out very nice. Uh, so I didn't film it or anything. Should have done, because you could have all seen what I was trying to do, but I got myself one of them chrome pens and just I highlighted the edges of the propeller which do, that does look good and then I thought oh well, while I'm here I'll put a little bit on a sponge and just dab it around some of the other places but it didn't come out nice so I just left it just wanted to put a few marks on where they get up on the wing and because uh, that's obviously where your paint wears off so that pretty much all the wash worn off and I think that's as far as the weathering went I wanted to go yeah it was um, so then I painted the whole thing in Vallejo's matte varnish. That's uh, so the first time I've used that. Went on lovely and it gave a brilliant result. And now it actually looks matte. So I shall be buying a, a bigger bottle of that. So now we're going to pick off the uh, masking tape from the canopy. Just pick a little corner with it and then pull it off. Speed this bit up a bit. And if you use, you can use the cocktail stick. Um, just if you get any underspray where it's gone underneath the um, tape, you can just just rub it off with the cocktail stick. Or, as I've been said, if you get yourself a spoon, sharpen the end, like whittle the end with your blade. You can use that as well. But no, I'm really pleased with that. It's come out nicely. Underside needs a little bit of attention, so I got uh, did the same on the underside with the wash, 
and I've also uh, used some pastels just to mark the um, just to mark some wear from the gun ports. This is Vallejo black, brushed on to the tyres. Got the two tyres underneath, and obviously the rear wheel. Be really careful not to get it anywhere. It's nice to do one with the wheels up because it looks nice. It's nice to do it. I'm glad I put it in flight on the diorama because it, uh, it's the best the best way of looking at a Spitfire when the wheels are up and it's turning. They're meant to be flown, aren't they? So that's the last few little touch-up bits. Pretty much there. Right, now this is a piece of Perspex. And this is a clear acrylic tube I got from eBay. Four millimeter tube. I think it was something like 150 millimeters long. Um, I super glued it to the Perspex. Uh, now I'm gonna drill a hole through the bottom of the uh, diorama with a four mil drill bit and as you can see it was a jump it was a blunt drill bit so we'll move on until it goes through bosh so now let's just widen that a little bit so now we've got a hole in the diorama um, Picked off a few of those bits. Obviously, once I'd finished, I painted that little bit in again. So now what I'm going to do is put some PVA school glue on the bottom and push the uh, the rod through the hole in the diorama. Sorry, this is all a bit big for my camera. I should have raised it up a little bit. So that goes in there. I stuck the plate on the bottom. And then I left that to dry overnight with, with it standing on it. So it pushed it in. And it just got left with the pole sticking out of the top. So that's the base done. So I've had a quick look at what kind of angle I wanted to stick the Spitfire on there. And I'm going to drill a hole in the bottom using Parkside's mini drill. It's like a Dremel copy bought from Lidl. Very cheap and a really handy tool. So I've got the angle there of where I want it. Just drill a little, I've drilled a tiny pilot hole and then I use the same drill bit to sort of widen it a little and get the angle right and And that's pretty much there. So once we stand the spit, put the Spitfire on the rod and all the vehicles on the uh, diorama, we get left with a lovely diorama of the Spitfire attacking the column of Africa Corps. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, it's been quite a long three episodes on this one but i think we'll do, i think you will like the result i like the result i was really pleased with it thanks everybody for liking and subscribing and pushing the notification button tell all your friends modeling isn't dull this is the finished result i'll move the camera about uh, I've got some pictures of it and next to the box of the box art I was trying to replicate. So thanks everybody for watching.